For those of you who don't know, my name is Allison Trisna and I'm the CEO of Team Turquoise. Here's my colleague and Vice President of Team Turquoise. Thank you all for taking the time to come out to our annual shareholder meeting of 2029. And if we're looking at the agenda for today, we're going to go over last year's 2028 financial statements. Then we're going to move on to review the past operations of the last 10 years that we've been in business. And then to conclude, we're going to inform you guys on our short and long-term plans moving forward. And I ask that everyone keep their questions until the end so we can get everyone's questions answered. So right here we have our balance sheet. And if you look, our uh, biggest asset is $217 million, and that comes from our subsidiary company, Smooth Operators, and that is how much they are worth. And if we go on to our equity, you see a red number here, that is our shared capital. And that's how much money we have spent over the last 10 years buying back our own shares. And then if we go to liabilities, our only current liability is $6 million, and that is our taxes that we owe that will be paid out next quarter. Moving on, we have our income statement. We did $63 million in sales last year, and our cost of goods sold was only $17 million. We have put a lot of money, time, and research in order to keep our prime unit per cost as low as we can, and that has allowed us to have a high net income of $27 million. This makes our growth profit, gross profit margin 43.5%, which is extremely high and is why we've been able to relay such high dividends back to you guys. Finally, we have our cash flow statement. And you guys were mailed a packet which has all of our financial statements in them and they're a little bit lengthier and break down exactly where these numbers come from. But for this purpose, we'll go through this one a little bit quicker. Um, this shows our operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Cash dispersed is um, the dividends we relay back to you guys, or cash dispersed and financing activities. And investing activities, the cash provided, comes from our dividends from smooth operators, our subsidiary company. Moving forward, we're gonna go over our past operations of the last 10 years. And here we have profitability. So how much money, even after we gave back to your dividends, we had 22.5% is what we made in cash after all of our expenses were paid out. And if you see on the top, I have our company was the most profitable sales company. Yet you see Team AHA is 124%, and that's because we are the most profitable sales company. AHA relied heavily on our dividends to boost their shareholder value, and that is where those numbers come from. Um, lost market shares. This was our um, biggest concern we had over the last 10 years. We grabbed a lot high market shares over our first few years of operations. If you look down here at the bottom, we have Adventures, Commuters, and Racers, which are the three markets that we are in. And at our highest, we had 21.4% at year four. And at the end, it dropped down to 16.8. On to Commuters, at our highest, year six, we had 36.7%, and it dropped down to 24.5. And racers and our just first year of operation, we had three quarters of the market, and then at the end it dropped down to only one quarter. So this is our biggest concern that we're going to um, work on combating, and we're going to invest a lot more money that now that we are more of a seasoned executive team, we can start putting more money into marketing and public relations. Um, so our biggest surprise, in our second year of operation, we were actually bought out by Team AHA. And this kind of, um, again, came as a surprise. Um, but like I said, I've been, able, I've been very honored to lead such a great executive team that handled this very well. And in turn, it did not actually hurt us as a company. It only helped us. And we contributed $162.65 to Team AHA's shareholder value which would have been enough to secure third place alone as a company without any sales. And what we would have changed looking back at the last 10 years, we would have aggressively combated to continue losses in market shares earlier. So as we look back, um, like I said, we're gonna put more money into marketing and public relations, but we wish we would have kind of maybe cut back on some dividends and put more money in earlier so we wouldn't have lost so much market share. And I'm gonna hand it off to Monroe to talk about our best decision. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. So yes, our best decision. This was clearly buying smooth operators. Now, at the time when we purchased them, they were only at 27 cents per share, and we were actually allowed uh, to help them go up to $165.61. Um, now, before we get into like, the financial side of things and the way they boosted us and helped us a lot, 
Um, when we were talking as an executive team, we saw that there was a lot of growth in this company. See, we didn't invest in the company alone, we invested in the people. We saw that there was talent, there was hard work, and there was perseverance. We didn't know that that 27 cents didn't reflect the type of people or the type of work ethic they had. There was just a couple of uh, issues that they had going into their third and fourth rollover that we could help them with. Ultimately, they helped boost our shareholder value by $120.94 by the end. Now, looking forward. Short term, like Allison had said, we need to combat our lost market share. The biggest thing of that, we ought to invest in the distribution. We were very lackadaisical in that area, and looking back, we would put a lot more money. So for the short term, we're going to heavily invest into those areas as well as marketing and public uh, relations. Also, a part of combat loss market share, we gave a lot of that to our subsidiary company, to the operators, because as well as we wanted to succeed, we wanted them to succeed as well. Now, for the long term, we're going to buy back a lot more shares. As the value of our company went up, the, uh, the more the shares are going to be worth, we want to buy out a lot more back. That way we have more value in our company. We're going to update our products. That's more so to meet the, the market quality, and that way we're, everyone we're selling to, we're meeting their requirements. And lastly, kind of going hand in hand with updating our products, that will lower our prime cost per unit, which will ultimately allow us to be the most profitable company and maintain that number one position. So overall, we're really excited that we have had such success in the last 10 years and we were able to relay that success back to you shareholders with dividends. And um, moving forward, we're really, really excited. As now a CSUN's executive team, we know where to place our money, where to place our talent, and we continue um, to foresee our profit, sales, and success go forward in the next 5, 10, 15 years. And now I want to open up the floor to any questions that you guys have for us. So AHA bought you guys, right? Correct. And you guys bought um, Smooth Operators? Correct. So how much influence did AHA have on your guys' like, way you guys went about doing your business? Um, they were actually um, really awesome in letting all of our day-to-day -day operations stay with us. We had great communication lines because they had a hold of our finances and we worked really well together to um, place our finances where we wanted them to. Um, I wouldn't say it was dictated one way or the other. Okay. Add on to that too is even like going to our last rollovers or our last years, um, we just saw that we were giving out too much dividends and they were uh, we worked together to kind of find a happy medium so that way they could uh, you know still see a lot of success so while maintaining our success and having enough cash on hand to uh, put money in the right areas. When we give presentations like these, one of the questions we get is, thinking back to communication class. Think of our own questions. Okay. Um, what is that? Are you looking at me? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I was hoping you were paying attention in communication class. Remember that. Yeah, remember the trick I showed you that if all of a sudden you're at a presentation and your audience falls dead on you and isn't giving any questions, you always have one in the back of your head to um, seed the audience for a couple of things to say. Because I know everybody's looking to me to ask all the questions. I was looking at you. I know you were. I felt the pressure because you saw me taking notes. Um, I really have two questions. Um, yeah, let me ask this one first. Um, you guys were in a real quagmire at the beginning when um, AHA bought you in terms of communication. And there was a lot of frustration, I think, between the teams. Um, now you're talking about um, actually really singing Kumbaya, which is, which is nice. How did that, how did that um, happen? I'd say from our end, I think we have some big personalities on our teams, and so our egos almost got hurt a little bit, and that's, I think, what um, put the barrier up at first, but just accepting what it was, and there was obviously nothing we could change about it, and so coming to the table with an open mind um, and a humble mind in order to do business together. Yeah, on top of that, just, we had, we had to, I, I mean, me personally, I had to take a step back and understand where they were coming from, uh, seeing, like, the, the financial success they could have, with making that decision early, and I think I think the biggest thing is that guy, yeah, he's like putting our egos aside, 
and understanding that when you can't change things, you just got to pierce the rear through them and make the most of it. And we're able to still work hard and you know do the right thing, so that way we can still be the number one for And respect their wonderful, smart business move. For know? sure, definitely smart. Yeah. Cool. Um, do you guys want to throw anything in right now, or do you want to wait for your presentation? We'll wait. Ooh. Well, I mean, yeah, like, nothing to add. <laughs> you prefer to wait? So, one thing um, that caught my eye, um, can you go back to your cash flow slide, please? Um, you noticed um, <laughs> that um, your cash balance was 20.9 mil, call it 21 and your ending cash balance was 12 mil, so you lost close on 40% of your cash in the last operating year alone. Um, and then I heard you say things like, um, you're going to increase your marketing spending, you're going to um, work harder at ensuring that your products are less expensive, um, you're going to um, try to maybe spend fewer dividends, but your cash has been dropping like a rock and you're spending more cash than you actually bring in. Um, as an investor, I'm frightened. Help me see how things will be okay. So I think a lot of that, like we said, our biggest concern is our loss of the share. If we go back to this, you can see, even for racers, we had 75% mm -hmm. of the racers market, and we were a really new, young executive team going into this, and so we've learned a lot, and we've learned to keep, I think we got a little excited and we're like, oh, okay, well, we have this much market share. We don't need to keep putting money into distribution, into marketing. And so we're going to take a step back and slowly regain, try and regain as much market share as we can. But we already have our prime premium costs really low. So in that sense, our expenses are going to stay low in that area. Okay. Because um, like I said, I am still concerned um, about your um, cash position. And um, your cash could choke you. Um, or lack of cash could choke you pretty quick I, in the next year or two unless you make some good choices. We're going to bring up our accounting woman. So we would, the biggest thing that we would do that would help our cash go up would be lower our dividends and that would be a process that we would have done throughout those three years. But since the rollovers were three in a row, yeah. we couldn't do that and that's what would eventually help our cash go up by lowering our dividends. Have you talked to the organization that owns you? Is your parent firm all yes, in for this? Yes, and we, we did, and they did lower it. So I think it would be a continuous talking about lowering and explaining the situation. And, and moving forward, they're okay with this? And uh, it, 100%. Also, we were, uh, our biggest focus too, uh, paying our dividends at a high, uh, at $25 versus $20, because we want to make you guys happy first. And when we look back at it, uh, we should have taken a step back and understand the longevity of it, not the short-term growth, but the long-term growth. I think we got a little bit money happy, sending too much cash in the bank, and we wanted to put it somewhere, rather than understanding that as our cash was going down, we should have uh, not played those cards and just you know been a little bit smarter with our money. Uh, that way, long-term, you guys didn't have these worries. But like you said, we're going to combat that with getting a lot of that market share back, um, and then we're going to be able to have a lot more cash on hand. Can you roll me forward, please, to where you start talking about um, buying the smooth operators? Right there. Um, anybody, um, how's, your, how's your math? Um, they bought smooth operators at 27 cents a share, and they're currently $165 a share. Um, what would be the ROI on that if um, you guys were to sell them right now? They're worth two hundred and seventeen point seven million dollars um, in our books as an asset. So if you sold them, you get two hundred and seventeen. And what did you spend for them? Eight million. Or it was. Yeah. Eight million. Eight six million. million. Eight, it was just over. Six, we did like a weird number to like. So you got close on over a, a thousand percent ROI on these guys. Um, as one of your major shareholders, I insist you sell them now take back that money so that you have much more cash. How do you feel about that? See you later, Trace. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're hoping for anyway. It's a mutual benefit. So you guys would actually like to be sold at this point? 
That was a kind of in our five year plan, yeah. yeah. Just because we uh, kind of want more racer segment and we also Thanks. want to stop indirectly benefiting AHA shareholder value. <laughs> and, and also to go back to that point, we should, uh, yeah, of course the, re the return on investment was huge, but it'd be um, something about calculating, it'd be interesting to see how much, obviously, they're only going to go up significantly. So we get up to, you know, I'd even, you know, be optimistic to 2,000% just because of their ability to capture a lot of the market and work all together. Well, let's see, because maybe they've peaked. I mean, we know that there's other teams in the market that maybe weren't quite ready for them, and they've seen them come up all of a sudden, and they're going, oh, well, we better start taking these people on and start directly um, fighting against their market share. That's a possibility, too, we would want to keep in mind, right? Definitely. And the fact, the fact that we actually, they had, um, they're in all the other segments that we're not in, so we actually captured a majority of the market as well. So, like, maintaining ownership in their company, I, I think for the longevity of it, like we had mentioned, like I said, we have to crunch those numbers. And if I, I don't see them peaking at all, as especially because in the racer segment, as we were going down, I think we could obviously maintain that a lot more. But um, just as it's important of us succeeding, it's important for them to succeed as well, for everybody to succeed together. Well, I think you guys did a great presentation. Thank you. And we will see what other um, teams have to say about the overall performance in the market area. Cool.